Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be talking about follow through. It's a really important animation technique to make your animations more believable and fluid. So with follow through, animations look a lot less rigid and they have flow to them. So here's the first example and this is without any follow through. So the arm swings up and down and the hand is very rigid. In this version, you can see there's some follow through. So the hand and forearm are swinging slightly later and it looks far more loose and fluid. You can see the keyframes I've got at the bottom here, and the first extra one is the forearm and the second one is the wrist. So I'll break that down, you can see that the arm moves first, so the keyframes of the arm are just there, the keyframes of the forearm are the second one, and then the wrist are there third. And you can see the wrist starts to move and rotate around there, so it keeps its structure, and now it starts to flow through, and then, it, and then at the end here, that's when it reaches the top of its movement. And characters without this follow through look very robotic and rigid. Now here's a way you can practice follow through. You can set up a ball and chain like this and you can practice the sort of pendulum swinging effect. It's nice and easy to set up so we'll go through that now. So I'll set up a new scene and I'll just use the objects that are available here. So let's go to front view. I'll scale this in the Z axis and let's move it up really slightly. And that can be the top of this funny chain thing. I'll duplicate that and I'll scale it but not in the Z axis so it's nice and thin and that's the first part of our chain, move that into position, duplicate that one, pull it down in the Z axis and then down here, shift right click to place my cursor here, I'll add a UV sphere. Let's scale that down and bring it down just a touch into position. Okay they're not connected but that doesn't matter, it will look connected when we start moving them. Now we need an armature so shift A armature single bone and we need to be able to see our bones so let's go to the armature properties viewport display and in front now let's move that into position and into edit mode with tab grab that top and pull it down now we can extrude that and we'll constrain it to the z-axis so I'll tap z when I press extrude e then z again and e then z again so each of these bones are parented to the bone above it now I'll connect my mesh to my bones, so one, two, three, four objects, select those, then the armature last, select those, and before I do anything it's a good idea to reset the transforms. So Control A will apply, or I call it reset, but apply the rotation and scale is what we want. We can check our transforms by going up to the item menu up here and checking that the rotation is at zero and the scale is at one. We want to make sure that all our objects have that, and they do, they're all ready to be applied to the armature. So let's select those objects again, and select the armature last, and control P, and we should be able to get away with automatic weights just there. Now when I click on the armature, and go to pose mode with control tab, I now should be able to rotate this, and it will move the objects. That's great. So I've undone that, let's move it into our start position. So G then X and move it across here and that's our start position. Let's press record and let's just tap G again so it inserts the location there. And it's going to take one second to get to the other side, so about 25 frames. G then X and let's move it across the other side. I'll get rid of this panel now with N. And at the moment it just goes across like that. So we need the pendulum to swing as it goes. So we want it static to start with and then when it starts to move we can rotate the first one a little bit, then the next one a little bit, and then the next one a little bit. Now I've made a slight mistake because I didn't set the rotation to start with, but that's fine. I can go back to the beginning here, the beginning frame, which is frame 1, and select each bone this time, and press Alt-R to reset the rotation. And that will record it because I've got record on. Now you can see it sort of swing across like this until it gets to the other side and that's where we need the follow through. They probably need to go a bit further, so I'll adapt that slightly. That's a bit better. Through to the other side, so frame 25, and that's where we get the follow through. So a couple of frames, I'm doing this in two frames, and that will swing through to the other side. And then do another two frames, through to the other side, and another two frames, and the last one. So as you go down the chain, and we call this a chain, 
So this could be the upper arm, forearm and hand. They slowly follow through. So each one after the other, and you'll get a few keyframes like this. So in this case, it swings across and up. The only problem we've got is the follow through starts too early. So we need a frame about 25 where it's back the other way. So if we take this position here, make sure there's a keyframe on every bone. So I can press I and then rotation to make sure there's a keyframe on each bone. Select that one keyframe, copy it, and make sure it's on frame 25. And now you can see it holds that shape until frame 25 and then swings across as it slows down. And we need to move that back really slightly because it starts to slow down, then it can swing across. So hopefully this has given you the idea of what you needed to do in order to make this sort of follow through work. So it goes across and as it starts to slow down, the ball and the energy from the ball and the chain keeps going through like this. So that's follow through. So you should see a few keyframes after your stopping point where the follow through happens. So your challenge now is to see if you can make that go all the way across, but backwards as well, and maybe have a swing as it stops at the end, then goes backwards and a swing at the end there as well. So that's follow through and that should give your characters a bit more life. Have a go at that and let me know how you get on in the comments. Thanks for watching and I hope this helps.